Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Arnold. So in today's video, I am covering a question as you're seeing on your screen. So explain the term stratified sampling and give its three advantages of stratified sampling. Basically, these kinds of questions, I'm just going to explain the concept of stratified sampling. And then when you understand it, you should be able to come up with your own words to explain what it is, okay? So now let's um, assume right here, right now. I'm going to assume that uh, we have uh, something called, let's say, let me just draw this box to illustrate. This is a school, okay? That is a school and uh, in this school we have classes where we have senior one, we have students of senior two, senior three, senior four. The students in senior one are 100, the students in senior two are 200, maybe the students in senior three are 400, the students in senior four are 600. I'm just coming up with arbitrary figures just like that. So uh, let's say we want to find out um, how many people here, okay, in this school. Um, we want to make an analysis um, on maybe the most popular phone brand, okay? You know, there are various phone brands. There is the Android phone, okay? Then there is uh, the iPhone, okay? The, the, the ones that have the iPhone and Android. And we want to find out which ones of these, of these two phones, which we want to make a statistical analysis uh, to, to find out which one is more popular amongst these students. So um, we can go ahead and just pick it means uh, these are how many? Uh, these are like 1,300 students in total. Okay, but then we cannot go and analyze or pick information on all the 1,300 students. There might be too many for us to do so. It could get it could become too expensive or very time consuming. So what do we do is that we are going to do sampling. Okay, we are going to be to 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 sample from these 1,300, we are going to get what we call a representative portion of these 1,300 students so that we are able to find, you know, we, we, we get a sample from this population, okay? It's a population of 1,300 students, but what we are going to do is that we are going to get a sample from there, and it is from that sample that we are going to go and make our statistical analysis on that sample. Now, what happens is that um, the way stratified sampling works is that we are going to divide this population into into its distinctive characteristics. So the, here, I just gave a, an example of a school, and we know that in a school we have senior ones, we have senior twos, we have senior threes, we have senior fours. So this is how we have chosen to divide this uh, this population into those four segments according to their classes so because we have divided these classes into their four segments these four segments that we have divided these classes are what we are calling strata okay and this is where the term stratified sampling comes from remember the question is asking us to explain stratified okay stratified sampling and we get stratified explain stratified sampling and give three you know three advantages of them so that is what we do okay so they are called strat they are called strata okay so here the strata is just based in terms of the classes we have divided them in terms of their classes now maybe we can choose to divide this population in terms of maybe where they come from Maybe of the, this one, this population of 1,300, there are those that come from north, from the northern part of the country, from the south, okay, from the east, from the west, from the central, something like that. So it means that you have divided your population in that. So in other words, the 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 method you use depends on uh, on on you, you what what you think is 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 applicable for you 
So for this case, we've divided them in forms of classes. So what happens after dividing the population in terms of classes like you're seeing here, then we shall go and pick from each strata, we shall pick uh, a sample from each strata that is representative of that unit. So for example, um, here, uh, the senior ones are 100. So we can say we are going to pick 10. I'm just giving an example, 10 students from senior one. Senior two, they are 200. So we shall pick 20 students from here. Senior three, they are 400 students. So we shall pick 40. Uh, senior four, they are 600. From here, we shall pick 60 students. So do you realize that in each strata, I just picked 10% of the population of that strata? Okay, so and how do I pick those 10%? I can just come and pick them at random. Yeah, 20, I just come and pick them at random. The 40, I know uh, these are 400 students. I'm going to pick 10% of that. So I just come and pick them at random like that. So I go and get these, these, these samples that I have picked. And now those ones become my, I, all together are the ones that I'm going to analyze on, you know, for to, 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 they, they are representative of the entire population. And so I'll go ahead and do my statistical analysis like that. So this is basically what is called stratified sampling. You know, that is what we call stratified sampling. And um, so um, I, I've explained it using diagrams. So looking at how I've explained it, you can use your own words to explain the term stratified sampling, okay, using your own English and give it three advantages. So if I meant to use it in my own words, I could just simply say that stratified sampling is simply a sampling technique that is used in statistics and research to ensure that the sample, the sample is selected from a population or, you know, a sample that is selected from a population represents various subgroups or strata, okay, so various subgroups or strata within that population. So like I've illustrated the population of students and we, we subdivided it into groups, okay? So we can continue and say that it serves to accurately reflect the characteristics and proportions of the entire population. I can go ahead and explain further that in stratified sampling, the population is first divided into distinct non-overlapping subgroups or strata based on certain characteristics of variables of interest. So the characteristics of variables of interest depend on you. In our illustration, we used uh, classes. You can use tribe. You can, the subgroups can be based on the tribe, like maybe the region where they come from, the country, or the subgroups can be based on gender or based on, you know, whatever characteristic you choose. Okay, and these variables can be factors, okay, like gender, income, geographical location, or any other relevant criteria. And each subgroup should be internally homogeneous. And of course, by internally homogeneous, we mean that the individuals within the subgroups should be sharing similar characteristics. That's what we mean by them being internally homogeneous. So once the population is divided into the strata, a sample is selected independently from each stratum and an appropriate sampling technique, technique like random sampling or systematic sampling is used to, uh, to get the samples from each strata. And the sample size from each strata is proportional to the size or importance of the stratum, like we had already done here, that each sampling size, okay, each sample that we picked here is proportional. So we say 10% of each. And uh, you realize that the numbers here, where there were 10, here there were 40, here there were 60, and so forth. So that is it. That um, um, each the, it, This ensures that each stratum contributes to the overall sample in the population, and it is the rep it's representative. So uh, the explanation I'm giving you here is general. You just have to understand the whole concept. You can always use your own con sentence constructions in the exam to explain this, yeah, something like that. So of course it goes on to say and give three advantages. Of course, let's get started with the advantages. The first one, of course, uh, it is increased precision and accuracy of the statistical estimates. 
Why do we say that there is an increased um, accuracy? Of course, this is because uh, when the uh, of course this is when there is considerable variability in the population. Representation from each stratum helps to eliminate sampling error, which leads to reliable results. Okay, so rather than getting into this population and then we just come and pick at random, okay. If we divide them in groups of similar characteristics and then we come and pick from each group, it's going to increase the precision and accuracy of our results. So in other words, uh, this has to do with the results, okay? Our results are reliable at the end of the day. Is it reliable results, okay? Or we'll call it increased precision. Okay, the second advantage here is um, of course uh, it uh, adequate representation okay we have adequate representation of the entire population because yes we have divided it into subgroups and this each group has been represented in the sample so by selecting samples from each stratum proportionally to its size or importance the resulting sample reflects the diversity and distribution of the population. So the yeah, the, 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 the sample is well represented. Okay, and this enables easy drawing of conclusions and generalizations regarding the entire population. Okay, then of course also the third issue is eliminates sampling bias. Okay. Okay, it eliminates sampling bias. In other words, it helps to mitigate the potential for sampling bias. Okay, because um, we 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 have we, we eliminate issues of maybe one. For example, here, if we're saying that we are we are getting each class ten percent, we are getting ten percent from each class. It means that each class is adequately represented. There is no class that has been overrepresented. There is no class that has been underrepresented. So it means that our results will be free from sampling bias. So in other words, if you're to write, you'll, you can say that it helps mitigate the potential for sampling bias. Um, sampling bias happens when certain characteristics or groups in the population are either overrepresented or underrepresented, and this leads to distorted results. Stratified sampling, however, ensures that each subgroup is adequately represented, therefore reducing chances of producing biased estimates, thereby producing a more representative estimate. Okay, so basically that's it. So those are your four marks. We have finished with question 1A.